all remember that haunting theme and the movie that gave people second thoughts about swimming in the ocean. Now a collection of photographs and never before seen footage about the filming of Steven Spielberg's 1975 blockbuster is the subject of a new book, Jaws, Memories from Martha's Vineyard. When Universal Pictures met Martha's Vineyard, history was made. Steven Spielberg and company took over the island for 159 days, hiring locals to fill in as extras and work on the production. It all took place on the fictitious island of Amity. Making of the film had a lot of impact on the island because there were so many people involved in it. People came from all over to be in it. People that were here were in it. And if people weren't in it, they made sure to capture history in the making. After sifting through thousands of amateur photographs and never-before-seen footage, author Matt Taylor, along with Jaws collector Jim Beller, compiled the never-before-released materials in the book Jaws, Memories from Martha's Vineyard. I, I grew up summers on the island, and throughout my childhood, I knew a, a, a great number of people that were involved in the production of Jaws. And so I knew that there were all kinds of great stories and photographs about the production that had never seen the light of day before. Once we really got going, combing the island from one end to the other, looking for artifacts to include in the book, I was just really amazed at the amount of stuff that's actually still here. The 296-page book chronicles the memories of the islanders, woven together with photographs, video, and stories sure to please even the most die-hard Jaws aficionados. It did a lot for a lot of people. And for the island and movie history. All right, and with me now are author Matt Taylor, contributing editor Julian Weiss, and Jaws collector Jim Beller. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. Matt, you're like the foremost <laughs> super number one expert on Jaws. How did that happen? You're such a young guy. <laughs> That's How, actually what, what Jim. were you, like two? <laughs> when... I, I was actually two when the movie was shot. And I actually do have vague memories from being on the vineyard that summer. Nothing too substantial. It had nothing to do with the production, but uh, Jim's the lifelong fanatic. Yeah, you're the he, lifelong he, fanatic. He's the one that brought me into the project around yeah. 2006. Yeah. And it took us a good year of kind of hemming and hawing about how, how we would actually, actually go about pulling such a book off. And I actually began work on it Thanksgiving morning of 2007 and finished early December of 2010, uh -huh. seven days a week. So it was pretty much exactly three years. Well, Jim, were you around when they were, when they were doing the filming? How did you get into being no, such I a, was just a collector fan. is what you are? Yeah, I was just a fan of the movie when I first saw it when I was nine years old at the Charles Theater in Boston here. My, my mom took me and a bunch of my friends to see it, and I was just a, a fan of the movie since. And the next day, wanted to read about the making of anything I could find about this, this movie. And just started collecting things throughout the years, just little by little and just... Now I have the largest in the world and of Jaws memorabilia in the world. What kind of stuff do you have? Oh, God. I mean, a lot um, of it is in the book, but... <laughs> you know, T-shirts, rubber sharks, books, every, everything you name it. They made it. Knee-high socks. I mean, the weirdest stuff, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some of the stuff is weird. And uh, I just started... It was just one of these, you know, things that I did. Yeah. And uh, just uh, love it. It's my favorite movie. It's... And... Uh, Jim always wanted to see a Jaws coffee table book. Exactly. Yeah. And, so and now we have it. It's back beautiful. In, back in no, 2005, um, there was Jaws Fest on Martha's Vineyard. And I was thinking, there's got to be all these photos that these islanders have that no one's ever seen before. So orig my original concept of the book was to just have a book of photos. And that's it. And at the time, I was just looking for someone to write a forward and epilogue. Mm -hmm. And someone um, on the vineyard introduced me to Matt and <clears throat> just took it from there. He just... Uh, he because of the people he knew on the vineyard. Mm -hmm. He knew these stories that I didn't know that we could have put in the book and more photos that the people that he knew, he had said, Jim, we can find more photos. We can just make this bigger and bigger. And he did. He I, did an I amazing job. I on the island. I knew endless people who had parts in the production, either in front of the cameras or behind the cameras. And yeah. as a kid, I, they showed me their shoe boxes filled with photos. And so I knew right who to go to. Yeah. All right, so yeah. you're kind of the Spielberg guy, right, Julian? I mean, you sort of know. I mean, how, how, did, how did he get, he, he knew he wanted some of these salty characters from around Martha's Vineyard. How did he know that was going to work? Yeah. Well, on the Sugarland Express, his previous film filmed in Texas, his casting director, Sherry Rhodes, uh, he'd instructed her to find as many eccentric locals from the community as possible to give it an authentic flavor. And because that had worked well in that film, he then asked her to do the same on Martha's Vineyard. And it turns out that she spoke with a woman named Ginny Poole, who is a theater director. And because Ginny was on so well connected on Martha's Vineyard into the theater community, <clears throat> she was unable to draw on some of not only people in the theater actors, but she knew all, who all the interesting characters were. 
I didn't realize so many of them were locals in that book. I mean, he was taking a bit of a risk, too. I mean, it was just only six years after Chappaquiddick. I mean, Martha's Vineyard was still kind of in the news. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised he was able to convince them to do it. Well, there was a lot of resistance that he met. In fact, in the movie Jaws, yeah. uh, when you see all the, all the squabbling in the town hall, that pretty neatly echoes some of the political battles going on to get permission to film on the island. Uh, Martha's Vineyard tends to be a fairly insular, traditional place, and there's a lot of resistance. In fact, uh, what are your thoughts, Matt, about what he had to go up against? <laughs> uh, well, it was actually Bill Gilmore, the production executive, was actually battling the local selectmen every day and every night at the town hall. And half of it same. was about the beaches and making them pristine, and you had got to put every blade of grass. And yeah, well, the other thing is the, the vineyard has very was. narrow roads to begin with, Edgartown, where they do the majority of filming, and so you have this whole conglomeration from Hollywood coming with the trucks and trailers and honey wagons, honey wagons and, the, you know, the all the other stuff that they brought to make the movie that just clogged the streets and made it almost impossible to maneuver around. You can imagine these people, wealthy people, coming for the summer and their driveways are blocked by yeah, the portable for, toilet units. For a couple hundred days. <laughs> All right, now you guys brought some uh, memorabilia. What do you got there, Julie? Yes, well, or, I have Jeff, what an do you original got? Bruce tooth that, that is in the book. So an original yes. mechanical shark's tooth it's a manic that, that, mechanical. that was in the, in the movie, yeah. So it's yeah. rubber. It feels like a car tire, yeah. yeah. It was in the movie? Yeah, it was. It was one of the, the, the great uh, whites, or was it somebody mm -hmm. else's? No, one of the, this, they one pried, of the sharks. pried by a local kid from the mouth of the shark. Oh, he just went and grabbed it? Which was a favorite yeah. pastime of local kids on the vineyard that summer, sneaking onto the lot where they kept, kept the sharks and either trying to carve their initials on the <gasps> shark or prying teeth yeah. loose. And <laughs> somebody <laughs> Hence the broken, teeth. they have a, uh, there's another part that kind of sticks up here that, kept it in. You can see here it was cut with a pocket knife Clearly or Clearly they had some extras on hand. Yeah. All right, what else you got there? And a piece of the Orca the, 2, which the was orca the two. sinking Orca in the, uh, the final act of the, the movie. This is yeah. just about all that remains of one of the most What is that made out of? It's fiberglass. That's fiberglass. Fiberglass. Yeah. It looks like authentic wood, doesn't it? Yeah. The final remains of one of the most famous boats in movie history. Yeah. And that we cut up into one inch by one inch square pieces to come with our limited collector's edition book. <laughs> So that's okay, can't wait to get that. After we cut it up last summer, this is all that's left. That's terrible yeah. to cut it up. Well, they were just rotting into the, yeah. into somebody's yard, so we figured we, we can could do get that with useful. limited color. What have you growing. got over there, Julian? I'll actually let Matt explain this because you got that from the Murphys. This is actually the control box for the sea sled shark, which was the mechanical shark that was pulled behind Lynn Murphy, who was a local marine mechanic hired to work on the movie, pulled behind Lynn's boat. Uh -huh. And you can still see the lettering written on the up. duct tape head up, head down. The other one that we have offset says tail up, eyes left, right, yeah. and two simple toggle switches, nothing too elaborate, and this was up on the mast of the Murphy's boat, uh -huh. and they would have this up there with them and watching the shark as it was towed behind them. Yeah, because they had all kinds of problems with the, with the shark. I mean, the shark wasn't in as many, uh, as much as the movie as they had originally anticipated. Who's the expert oh. on that? Yeah, well, that's why it works so Julie, much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in terms of the technical problems, I mean, the, whole, the book really gets into that. What did you find in your research about what went wrong with the sharks? Well, everything. Barnacles. Uh, 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 People uh, pulling uh, the tooth Electrolysis out. was the, main, <laughs> the, the big problem. They were all dry tested on the back lot at Universal, and when they plunked them into the water. How many did they have? Martha's How many Vineyard, of these they just seized right up. How many of these mechanical sharks did they have? Two platform sharks and one sea sled shark, which this is the controls for. Um, and they just were covered in barnacles, which they didn't plan for. And like I say, electrolysis, seizing up in the salt water. Also, it was a lot colder. I mean, it was supposed to be warm yeah. mid-July, but actually it was cold when they were shooting that thing. Yeah, that didn't have to uh, bear too much on the mechanical problems. It was the salt water reacting with the electronics that they didn't think about. You know, they were tested in, in um, mm -hmm. fresh water and, and the dry, either fresh mm -hmm. water tanks or the dry back studio. What's back fascinating studio. is you have some of the best special effects minds in Hollywood are creating these sharks, and when they break down, Lynn Murphy, a boat mechanic, ends up saving the day. Local boat mechanic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By That's just right. fixing, he just All gets right. in there. But the whole thing it. with the barrels in the movie came as a result of not having the shark when they needed it. Oh, they and were so throwing Spielberg the barrels out in the... resulted on a very Hitchcockian method of indicating that the shark was around by showing these barrels floating. Yeah. <laughs> so. Jim, what is it about this movie? I mean, wh wh why has it captivated so many people? Not just you. I mean. oh, it's just a movie that has everything in it, and it, it still can scare people. Yeah. When you're in the water, you're not knowing what's under you. It, it's still, you know... It's, it's almost I, like I went psycho. swimming in, so, in, in a freshwater lake after that, and I was still terrified. Yeah, it's like, I am too. It's just, you, know, <laughs> you don't you know that a fear. A dark they, lake at night, it's like... <laughs> they got that fear. Yeah. They, they, and the music. The music. The, oh, the, the, the John Williams There's so many music. good elements. The music, the acting, the screenplay, yes. the source. Peter Benchley's source material is an excellent source to build off in the first place. Yeah, and, and, and Roy Scheider. 
Very cute. Fantastic. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, good luck with your book, Jaws, Memories from Martha's Vineyard. It's really great, great co coffee table book. Thank you. Not very just thank for you the so island. Thank you. All right, that is it for Greater Boston. Reminder to tune in to my radio show at noon on 89.7. Tomorrow, it's our week in review. Then tomorrow on Beat the Press, Newsweek's cover of Michelle Bachman gets some angry response, plus the story that took backseat to the economy. That's all tomorrow at 7. I'm Emily Rooney. Good night.